Floss Tube. It's Kate here of Colorblind Cross Stitch um, and Neko, who is currently rubbing my desk because he's a cat. Um, today is Saturday, June 17th. I have. There's Neko. Hi, Neko. Yes, he's such a lovely boy. So stop. Oh, don't fall. <laughs> okay. There's Neko, he's gonna give up on sitting in my lap because he nearly fell off my lap. Um, where was I? Yes. No, don't eat the plastic. Cats, man. Cats. So now that he's eating, trying to eat the, the Ziplocs my things are in. <laughs> Cause that's, I don't know why. It's a, like, I don't understand. Why is plastic so wonderful to lick? Like, it just, you, anytime I have, like, plastic bags, anywhere Neko can get to, it's like, he just has to lick them, and I don't get it. Um, you are dumb, Neko. Or just weird. I mean, you're definitely weird. Okay, you're gonna sit on my lap. Maybe don't fall this time. Um, yeah. I'm distracted by my cat and his really weird plastic licking thing that he's got going on, which I feel like is a cat thing. Um, cause other cats do that too. It's just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand cats. I love cats, but I don't get them sometimes. Um, I have, actually I only have, well, three things to show you. I have one major stitchquisition, which was awesome. And then I have two whips. Um, I figure I'll go with the stitchquisition first cause that leads into things for the whips. So... What I found, um, once again on Kijiji, I, I think whoever like the god or power of bargain, like whoever the god of bargains is, they must like really like me or something because this is the second amazing thing I have found on Kijiji in the past three weeks. Um, so I found someone who was selling a whole bunch of embroidery floss, um, for, she just had them in like big big Ziploc bags and she was just like ten dollars a bag um, and each bag has about uh, had about 170 skeins in it um, so ten dollars per 170 skeins um, yeah because I guess she had it was her mother was a needle pointer and so she was sort of like um, I don't know if her mother just got got too old to needlepoint effectively or if she you know passed away um the person i bought the things from didn't say then i didn't ask i figured that'd be kind of rude like what happened to your mother is she dead no gods i am occasionally not very tactful but i'm at least not quite that bad i hope so yeah so this lady's mother was a needle pointer had all this like stash she was sort of cleaning out her basement and like organizing her house and she found like all these bags of embroidery floss and was like I don't want them I don't use them I will sell them for like I said ten dollars a bag so I can't I can't show you the original bags of floss actually no I can I will insert a picture because I took a picture when I first got them because I was super excited so that's what they came like first is just stuff full of floss um so I've been going through and I have I forgot to grab the container but um my sort of odds and ends of um odd skeins that are like because I have some that are like Lilycraft which is a thing that doesn't exist anymore and some that are like Galaxy which is a thing that doesn't exist anymore but at least those ones have DMC numbers on them and then I have some that are Singer, as in like the sewing machine company, because apparently they make embroidery floss, or made embroidery floss at some point. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't make embroidery floss now. Um, the problem with that one is like, the Lilycraft ones have the color name written on them. So even though they don't have DMC numbers, I can find out, I can figure it, oh, this is this color, because it's literally written on the floss. The Galaxy ones have um, have DMC numbers on them. They have their own numbering system, but they also have DMC numbers on them. 
the singer ones have singer numbers, which I have not been able to find a like DMC conversion to. I'm not sure if that exists or if I'm just failing at finding it because, I mean, you try and Google for like singer and like thread or something and you just get like singer sewing machines and like singer sewing thread because like that's what they do. Um, I also have a bunch that um, are like Iris, Iris and Venus. Um, I'm pretty sure they're both basically the same thing because like their labels look the same except that one says Iris and one says Venus but it's like in the same font with the same layout and everything. Um, they have no numbers on them at all. So I have no idea what colors they are. I think there's a bunch of like yellows and maybe some reds and things but like I don't know whether they're the same colors or different or what's... So I mean they're floss. Eventually I'll you know probably sort them into my um, you know, random unlabeled floss box piles, um, kind of dealio. Um, and then I got, the bits that I can show you are, this is Giant Bag ODMC. Uh, currently I've mixed, like, my unbobinated DMC in here too. Um, so it was like, Wait, actually, I took notes. I took notes because the amounts amused me. Let's see. So, from the lady, I got 256 skeins of DMC. So there's a little bit more than 256 skeins in here because I had, I don't know, 20 maybe, a couple dozen skeins of DMC, just kind of floating loose from previously. So that's 200 plus skeins of DMC in one big Ziploc bag. Then I have, what might it say? 223 skeins of JP and Coates. Again, plus a couple more, actually far fewer JP and Coates skeins lying around. So that's probably like 230, 235 skeins in total. Um, big old bag of JP and Coates. And then I have a slightly less big bag of skeins of Anchor, um, which are, I got 70, 70 Anchor skeins from the Lady on Kijiji, and then I probably had um, about that much again in my, like, box of loose skeins. So that's all of my Anchor in a big bag. Um, what's interesting about um, especially the, so I'm going to put my floss box, my, my flossy things back. Let's put the JP and cards at the bottom, or not the JP and cards, that's the DMC. Um, what's interesting is DMC has never changed their numbers. Um, so I don't know when they changed their labels because some of these have, um, you can see like those ones are are pretty close to like the DMC labels we have now. Um, but then you have ones, like most of them have labels, like where's a nice one you can see? Look at that 341 at the bottom. Like silver, silver labels, which are, I don't know when DMC changed their labels. So there's, that's like vintage. Um, so I don't know how old this floss is. Probably older than me. This is like pretty much a, um, this is a thing because JP and Coates changed their numbers at some point. Um, I don't know when they changed their numbers. So most of these skeins are in old JP and Coates numbers. Um, There's a tiny number somewhere in here that are new numbers, but I don't even know where they are. Because almost all of them are old numbers. There's also a surprising lack of color in the bag of 200 plus JP and Code skeins. Um, because a lot of them are like, this lady had bought, you know, like, here's five skeins of this color, and ten skeins of this color, and, you know, seven skeins of this other color. Unfortunately, none of them are blues. 
I will explain why that's unfortunate in a minute when I talk about my whips. So that can go in there too. And then Anchor. Anchor is interesting because like JP and Coates, they changed their numbers at one point. Um, I do know because I found it when I was looking up, you know, the old to new Anchor sort of conversion, is that Anchor changed their numbers in 1962. Which means that maybe not quite half this floss, a third of it maybe, a quarter, I can't remember exactly how many are old anchor numbers instead of new anchor numbers, um, comes from like a before 1962. I was, that's, that's really old. I mean, okay, that doesn't sound right because I know there are plenty of people who are old enough that, you know, they lived during 1962, but like, okay, I did not live during 1962. That was like when my parents were young, so not meaning to like call my parents old, but I mean, I've just dug myself into a hole, haven't I? I just, I keep talking, I'll just make the hole worse. Just, 1960, I mean that's, no I can figure it out, 55 years ago. That's a pretty long time to have DMC lying around, is what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. I have that? Yes, I do have that right. So, that's a big old bag of floss. Big old bag of floss. So much floss. But that brings me to my whips. So, my first whip is the Tangible Good Project or as my Christopher calls it, the tapestry, or battle tapestry, if you will. Game tapestry, if you want. What else? I don't know what to call it. Um, oh, here, we can turn the needle minder upside down. Or right side up, rather. Shroop. There you go. Uh, so I finished the black outline for Undertale Guy. Um, turns out Undertale Guy is actually named Sans. That's what I learned yesterday. Um, because I was writing out who all the characters were on this thing because it turns out that um, I think I mentioned last week that it looked like the desert bus submissions for this year had closed. It turns out they have actually opened again so I filled out the form yesterday to be like hey I have a thing I want to donate to you when it's finished. Um, I'll find out, I think, by middle of July, I think is when they said they'd sort of, like, get back to people um, and let them know if they are, like, accepted, if their submissions are, like, things they, you know, they want. Um, so, you know, I'll see. Um, I honestly, I have no idea how, how this will be received, especially because, I mean, I obviously, I don't have it finished yet, so when I submitted my, like, thing to say, hey, I'm making a thing that I would like to donate to you, um, you know, I, I included, like, here's a progress pic of what I've sort of done so far, and, you know, here's the, like, pixel art of what it's gonna look like, um, except, you know, in cross-stitch, but I obviously don't have that done yet. Um, so I don't know whether they'll be like, yes, good, you know, looks like it'll look awesome, or if they'll be like, um, get back to us next year when it's actually finished. Um, if they do accept my thing and say, hey, that's a, that's a thing, that will be awesome, um, I think I have until middle of September, maybe end of September to finish it, um, so, while well, luckily so far this has been stitching up relatively quickly, that gives me basically July, August, September to finish it. Uh, that's not much time, so we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, and see if they get back to me with, you know, what they say. Um, but so yes, that Sans, he's an Undertale guy, I got the black done. Um, I've actually had not had much time to stitch this week compared to the last couple of weeks. So I got him the black done, um, and put it down so that I could start work on my, um, Voyage at Sea, which I will show you in a minute. Um, because that's going to be a Christmas present, so I want to get some work done on that, too. Um, I had been hoping that I would have some time uh, later in the week to pick it up again and, like, put the white in 
for for Sans and get him done. Um, that didn't happen because I got all that floss, and so I was organizing it and inventorying it. Um, and then last night, having gotten it all sort of like in the computer inventory, um, I started pulling the rest of the colors that I would need for for this project because I was like, okay, I have just gotten 684 skeins of floss. There's no way that I can't have everything I need for this. <laughs> no. So. I do have a whole lot more skeins than I had before. Um, part, of, part of the problem is that um, that's the blue for the sky. Um, turns out, I didn't realize, I need 10 skeins of that to do the whole sky. It's like 32,000 32, stitches or something? Or like, no, no, it's more than that. 37,000? Yeah, 37,000. So if I've done, I mean, I'm, I've got like a thing that like estimates, you know, this is how many stitches a skein of floss does if you do it on this count with this many um, strands. And I mean, I'm doing it in half stitches so I can double that. So my calculation is, I mean, that roughly I should be able to get 4,000 stitches out of a skein of blue. 37,000 stitches mean I need 9 or 10 skeins. Um, I don't have 9 or 10 skeins of like a blue. So, there's 3 skeins of blue, I need to buy more blue. Um, and then there is, I did actually find something at least equivalent to most of the greens. Some of them are DMC, some of them are JPN coats. Um, there's one green in here that's like really dark. Uh, I can't see it in the bag currently. Um, but it's like a really dark hunter green. Um, and I don't have, I have two skeins of that and I might need three. Oh, that's just one up here. Oh, my pins are rattly. Whoops. Oh, that is. Lost green? Lost green? This one. That is the hunter green, which I have. Actually, it's probably not even two skeins. Um, so I probably need at least one more skein of that. Um, and I don't have a green that dark that I have three skeins of. I do have another green that is almost as dark, or like. Like I think it's in the, maybe in one of the anchor greens. I have like a dark avocado, which to me looks the same. Of course, you know, it's probably not the same because it's me. Um, so I need to get at least one more skein of that. And there's another one, which is one of the greens in here, which I think is probably the green for either the hills, some of the hills or the grass, in which I have like the DMC, like two skeins of DMC, and then five skeins of the equivalent JPN coats. Um, but I'm pretty sure that one I can kind of fudge and be like, well, I mean, I have to look at the pattern and look at where that green goes in. But I think I can kind of go, well, I can do the hills in one color and do, like, the ground in another color and, you know, they're different enough, like, that I'm not trying to do, because like, the, the JPN coats and the DMC for that one are similar, but not quite the same. The DMC is a little bit lighter, I believe, um, kind of thing. And then I've pulled as many single colors as I have colors. Um, which is surprisingly few, actually. Um, I know I have more than half, but I mean, along with the 10 skeins of sky I still need, um, there's at least like 10 or 15 other colors that I don't have in here yet. Um, I'm trying to see if, if I can pull 
similar colors from my Mass O Mass O flosses. Um, for example, you know, if it calls for a medium of a color and I have, you know, a dark of that color. If it's not, if it doesn't look like it's too much of a contrast, then I'll, you know, use the dark instead of the medium or something. Um, because for a lot of the colors, like, they only, they're only used in, like, 50, 100 stitches, um, and if this, if it's just like, oh, the shade is a little bit off, but it's not like something where there's two or three shades of the same color, um, then, I mean, if there's two or three shades of the same color, then I'm kind of like, well, I can't just, like, fudge, fudge it because I'm going to lose a shade. Um, so I'm sort of trying to see if I can pull, pull similar colors, um, see what that gets me. Um, I'm still working on that because that's a bit time-consuming to kind of go, okay, I have these colors that might work, let me find these colors in my unorganized piles of thread, and then pull them and then sort of like see, see what they're like, because, um, they're unorganized piles of thread. I'm gonna need more bobbins, you guys. <laughs> Clearly, I'm going to need to bobbinate all the things, um, you know, 700 plus things of floss, um, plus the other, like, 50 DMC skeins that have in a, like, they're on floss cards, um, that I've been meaning to bobbinate for a while. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to see if I can find, um, because I found people on eBay selling, like, bobbins by the hundred. I think I'm gonna have to see if I can find someone selling bobbins by the thousand for a good price and just, like, buy a thousand bobbins. Um, that should do me for a while. Um, because clearly I'm gonna need more than another hundred. Um, so if I keep just buying them in hundreds, I will just, like, be buying bobbins forever and waiting forever for them to come because they take forever. Um, because they're coming from China. They take the long way around. So I need to buy more bobbins. I think I'm also going to, um, I saw someone on Amazon selling, like, the double-sided floss boxes. Like, the really big ones that hold almost the entire set of DMC. Um, so I think... Next time I'm on Amazon and ordering things, um, which probably won't be for a while, but you know it's not a crucial thing. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna go and like order one of those boxes. Um, they do also have them in Michaels. I did see them in Michaels, which is I mean why I don't feel bad about buying them on Amazon because I have seen them already, so I know what they look like and what you know what they fit and whatnot. Uh, so, but the one like in Michaels, they're like. $40 or something. Um, and on Amazon, they're like 15 So, so um, maybe if I got a coupon at Michael's, I might just buy them from Michael's. But otherwise, I mean, mostly it just make, makes sense to be like, okay, next time I do an Amazon, you know, thing, I'll buy one from Amazon and eventually have a big, one of those big floss containers to put all my floss in. And, bobbins and then just slowly bobbinate, you know, bobbinate as I go along kind of deal, probably. Spend some time bobbinating. Um, so yeah, not so much on that because floss happened. Um, and like I said, also, I wanted to get to my other whip, uh, which is a new start. I mentioned this last last week is that I have this dimensions kit. Um, I'm going to apologize for the glare. This is probably going to be very glary. So it will look like that when it is finished. Um, last time I showed you I just had basically gotten the kit. Um, so I bobbinated all the things um, because I'm not a huge fan of those floss cards. I mean, especially the dimensioned ones, because the, the the floss is 
Okay, let's talk about it. I like the fact that Dimensions Kits comes with like their floss pre-sorted on floss cards that aren't going to like fall apart or get tangled. Um, by the same token, the Dimensions floss cards, the floss is actually like glued into the into the card. So um, you have to, you know, cut it off off the card. But you're only using, you know, two strands at once, right? So what do you do with the other four strands of that of that length of floss? Um, which is why I'm like, I'm gonna put everything on bobbins so that when I'm doing my thing, I can, you know, bobbinate the bits I'm not using and keep them all together with their numbers so I don't get them mixed up. Um, so I had to bobbinate all the flosses, bobbinate all the flosses, um, and then I had my fabric, which I mentioned. I've kind of scratched this up, so it's kind of... Uh, I mentioned that I tried coffee dyeing some fabric. Um, I ended up giving it... What is up with all my needle minders being upside down? Huh. Giving it another go at the coffee dye. Oh. Um, and this is what I, this is what I have put into this, and also what I came up with for the fabric. The fabric is actually, so instead of having those really, really light splotches that I, that I showed before, it was like, there's dark and then there's a light splotch. This has sort of like, a much more subtle variegation going on. Um, what's actually interesting is, and I don't know if it will show up. Show you my back. I'll show you my backside. Um, I don't know if it would show up, for example, but um, like for example, in here, um, there's actually bold side, subtle side. Um, so I went with the subtle side for the for the ship um, and started a couple of pinks, which are half stitches, and grays, that was a length of gray, which is all whole stitches. Um, did I? Oh yes, I think that's only, eh, I finished in the middle of the line. I think that's all half stitches. Because that was what the pattern came for. The pattern has the sails, like all in half stitches. And then this is the, the mast, I think, or the rigging. Um, it's sort of hard to say until I think once the back stitching is put in, it will look much clearer. Um, so that was a very small start um, because the rest of my time was spent bobbinating and then also uh, re dyeing my fabric and then sewing the edges so that it wouldn't fray. I always feel like that takes a really long time. Um, wasn't so bad with this fabric because it's fairly small, um, but like this one. Sewing the edges of this one took forever because that's like 30 by 20. It's a lot of sewing. So yeah, so I did that like Monday night. Um, Tuesday I was busy and didn't get to stitch. And then Wednesday I picked up my mass of embroidery floss. And so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, was all spent organizing and inventorying and figuring out what I have and what I can use for the tangible good project, which, you know, I don't have all my flosses for yet. So that was my very tiny start. Um, so I'm, I'm, so current plans are to continue on um, both these two things if I get a lot done in one of them, maybe I'll pick something else up. I mean, I would like to be able to give some of my other whips some love. Um, I haven't picked up the Egyptian sampler now since um, mid-May kind of thing. I still want to be, I want to do more than put in like two circles on the Connie, no, four circles. I've done four circles on like the Connie G rainbow style that I spent all that time pulling pulling colors for. Um, 
So yeah, I want to do all the things, but um, this has a time limit of Christmas. This has a time limit of September. So they have to be my priorities now because they actually have time limits. Because I'm doing them for, you know, something that isn't me. Um, so I need to get those done. So I'm going to try and do sort of make those kind of like focuses and try and sort of do, um, you know, every week do a little bit of each of them. Um, so I'm not sure which I'm going to start today. Don't. Okay, you're. He's licking his tail. Sorry, Neko is sitting on the bed beside me. He's licking his tail for a minute. I thought he was trying to eat the clothes pegs attached to the, the stitching. Which, I mean, I was just talking about how he likes to eat plastic bags. Or lick plastic bags. He doesn't really eat them. He just licks them. So, like, licking wooden clothes pegs? Maybe. I don't know. Cats are weird. Anyway, that's me. Me and my new hordes of embroidery floss and whips. And I will see you next week. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe if that is your thing. I'm always happy to hear from people. Um, no, there was a... Who was it? I can't remember who it was now. Someone was asking about, about where Neko got his name from. Um, are you going to come up here, Neko? No. He's just going to go back to lying on the bed. Um, so yes, Neko is actually... Neko is actually the Japanese word for cat. So literally, my, my cat is named Cat. Um, when he was a kitten, he was Kuniko, which is the Japanese word for kitten. And then he grew up, and then he wasn't a Kuniko anymore. He was a Neko. Or a Neko-chan, if he's being particularly cute. Yes, Neko-chan. Hi. Hi, Neko-chan. You going to come say hello? Come say hello, because I'm talking about you. You are a tail. <laughs> no? Okay. That was it. I said his name, he came and said hello, and then he was done. Um, he's gonna go back to eating plastic bags. Don't do that. <laughs> no, don't eat the plastic bags. So yeah, that's Neko. His name is his name is Cat in Japanese. Um, it's funny because I mean most people don't speak any Japanese. I mean I don't speak any Japanese, other than knowing, you know, the word for cat. <laughs> but every once in a while, you know, I'll come across someone who does speak Japanese, and it's just like, yes, my name, my cat's name is Neko, and they're just kind of like, really? <laughs> But yes, so he is named Neko. Uh, apparently the YouTube like closed, like automatic closed captioning mangles his name terribly. It is actually spelled N-E-K-O. Apparently they like, my friend Joy was telling me apparently the closed captioning like spells it with like, it's like N-E-C-K-O or like N-E-C-C-O or like what? What are you doing? Automatic closed captioning is not super powerful, but I mean, considering I think it actually does okay. So better than nothing. It's kinda like Facebook's automatic like um picture descriptions. Which occasionally are weird, but are, you know, often often will at least be like, there is a person here. So oh I think I got a cat hair on my nose. Or it's just like the floss tube itchy nose thing going on. Because apparently that's a thing. Everyone gets itchy noses when they're in front of a camera. <laughs> apparently. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so that was um, the one question I got. Um, so yes. Neko, Japanese for cat. That's where he gets his name. I've pretty much decided anytime I have a pet, it's going to have a name in a different language. Um, like, if I ever get a dog... I want to name it Kimik, uh, which is the inexistent word for dog, and no one else will say it right because it's not K's, it's not Kimik, it's Kimik with um, a uvular plosive, which is like like a K, but back further in the mouth. 
Um, so it's not quite a K, but then everyone will say my dog's name wrong, so maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, first I'd have to get a dog, and that's not happening anytime soon, and also I'd have to get a dog that um, I'm in charge of naming by myself, because I feel like if I ever get a dog, it'll be because I'm living with my person, and he will also want to, like, you know, have a say in naming the dog, and he might not like a name that he can't pronounce. Because <laughs> Kimmich is not quite... No one, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a sound that, that, that ick, does not occur in English, so... Or French. No, wait. I don't think it occurs in French. I don't think French has you ever close it. Anyway, phonology aside, that's my my major is showing again, but tangent pets names, Neko cat, and such like. That was the one question I think I received. I don't think there was anything else, um, which I thought I would mention. Yeah, because I was talking about likes and comments and subscriptions because that's a thing you should do if you haven't done already because. I think that's awesome. Um, you know, if you like to see me and would like to see more of me, that's that's always an option. And I love my comments. Like I said, I read them all. I try and respond, at least, you know, at least give you a heart to let you know that I've read it and try and come up with something useful to say. Sometimes that doesn't happen or I like, I get busy and yeah. But like I said, I do read all my comments. I do love them. Um, and that's everything. Yep. Yep, that's everything. So I will talk to you next week. Bye.